What's the success or failure in you? You. It's always you. And some of you aren't equipped to accept that fact. You think it's going to be, well, it's going to be convenient for me to blame ICT because he doesn't trade with life funds. Whoop, whoop, something's wrong with that fucking excuse now, isn't it? It's going to be real convenient to be able to blame this market today. Well, I told you no trade this day. Oops. It's going to be real convenient for some of you to say, yeah, I tried to trade that. I see bullshit. I watched a couple videos. Mm, to be honest, it was probably three of them. Never took any notes, but this guy talks too much. He's full of shit. So that's the reason why it don't work. Well, that's you, buddy. Half ass Alan ain't going to make it in here. Half ass Alan is not going to make it in this industry. You have to pour yourself into it. And you have to have, have a greater purpose in mind that is not in, limited to just you. When you're accountable to more than just you, you're going to trade differently. You're going to think about that risk differently. You're not going to say, fuck it, man. It's 15 contracts if I blow the account. It's just a reset. Shit, it's easy. They're doing discounts now. Let's just go at it. What's the worst that could happen? The worst that could happen is you're creating... This mindset that, well, you know, I don't have to be all that diligent about what it is I'm doing. I can roll the dice like I'm at the casino. And if I get lucky and have a lottery win, look how cool it's going to be if I show my payout on this big exorbitant amount of money that wasn't acquired by skill. Listen, folks, people win the lottery all the time. It was no mental acrobats that require of them to be able to do that. They foolishly spent their fucking money on this dumb shit. And the chances of that happening were so next to nothing, but yet it happened for them. And I knew a person. His name's Butch. Stop it. The piper's going after me. <laughs> Get off me, girl. Come on now, stop. It's one of these high dollar slips. I don't want them all tore up. Hear that? Materialism. <laughs> stop it, girl. This guy was a block layer, a laid brick. And he's, uh, he probably had about three teeth in his whole head. Bald, drove around with a trash bag duct taped over his passenger side window for years. Never replaced it. Had a young, uh, young girl working at a laundromat in Middle River, a little blonde hair girl. She was the attendant. And obviously he's too old for her and you know he's probably a dirty old man mentality. He would go in there and play on their little slot machines and illegally they would pay out, you know, if you won. That happens a lot in the bars and stuff around here still today. But uh, they gotta trust the clientele that's being paid out. And he was one that they could trust that if he did it, he'd get paid out. You're not making much. In fact he's probably spending more money than he was actually getting out doing it. Long story short, he went up and said, I wanna get a scratch off. And the girl that he had the fancy for said, no, Butch, the big game tonight is $30 million and took his dollar bill. Instead of buying the scratch off, this young lady processed the fucking winning ticket and he cussed her. And the very next day, he's on the shoulders of Max Waite, which was his boss, carried around on the news. He's $30 million rich. What the fuck? Exactly. And the first thing he went out and did was bought himself a Ford Mustang, a green, ugly ass fucking convertible Mustang with a tan top. How fucking stupid. That's new money for you, though, folks. Oh, shit. I just made $30 million on a lottery win. Let me go out to the dealership, tell them here's the proof I won because they'll do that. And they gave him the shittiest looking fucking Mustang I've ever seen in my life. And everybody in the neighborhood laughed at him. So what'd he do? He went out and got himself a Corvette convertible. Red. I was envious as shit. That was pretty. That was pretty. That red would look good. And I don't like red. Still, everybody complained. They said, dude, what the fuck's wrong with you? You just made $30 million. You're buying that? Just like some of y'all. 
You made all this money selling mentorship, ICT, and you got these little-ass Chevy Corvettes? Where's your big-dollar cars? Well, if you know anything about Maryland, <laughs> the roads around here, you just can't drive these really, really low-profile cars without tearing them up. And Chevy's, their Corvette, that's my dream car. I was wanting that all my life, and I've been a Corvette man all my life. So he trades his Corvette in and gets himself an orange burst Lamborghini. Ooh, pretty. Pretty. Pretty fucking wide, too, and got it stuck inside the Taco Bell drive through Tore up the fucking rims, had to get pulled out by a wrecker. How about that? New money. New money. You think that's stupid? He traded in once he got his rims fixed. Got a Ferrari. And didn't get the vibe that he was hoping for it. Traded the Ferrari in for the same fucking Lamborghini that he gave up. That he replaced the rims for. Now, what is that? That's Little Pig number one. Straw house. Chasing shit that means nothing. You know what he ended up doing? Still going in that laundromat. I think he got $13.5 million because he did the cash option. I would have done the annuity. And still bet on that fucking little poker machine that wasn't going to pay him anything. What did he really want? He wanted that girl. And you know what? He got her. Took her to Atlantic City. They stayed up there a couple times. And not to be crude, but he hit it and quit it. I've seen her in recent years. She's a mess. And he's been to Atlantic City. He's been to the local casinos here. And you're probably saying, what the hell does this got to do with anything? This is what some of you are thinking like. And if you get these big payouts, you're going to act just like this guy. He spent and wasted millions of dollars in casinos trying to get more. You're not satisfied with $13.5 million? $13.5 million, friends. Listen, you're set for life. You're done. You're done. If you manage it appropriately, your family can live off of that. Once you're gone. I'm not aware where he's at today. Because we're talking about something about 10, 12 years ago. Actually, you know what? My son, Caleb, is... No, we're talking about something 24 years ago. Man, good grief. Time really flew. I don't know where he's at today. I don't know if he has any money left or not, but he's chasing that moment, that feel good moment. And that's what I was talking about earlier. Thought I lost track, didn't he? No. When you have a win, when you have these success stories, they're fleeting moments. They only last momentarily and they're gone. They're gone. And you have to go out and try to get something else, something new, some new candy to share with your friends. But you got to keep the bigger piece for yourself because greed. But you want everybody in the neighborhood to say, wow, look at Tommy's bike. Shit. I wish I had a bike like that. Wow, look at him, man. He's dressed out. Look at his drip. Shit. His kicks are awesome. I'm going to get a pair of them. I don't care what I got to sell on Hawk. I'm going to get that. That watch. Look at that watch. Wow, he spent that much? Man, if I had a watch like that, people would really respect me. Let me tell you something, folks. I have watches that cost more than anybody that's an influencer in YouTube finance for Forex or Futures. I have watches that cost more than their fucking houses, okay? I don't need to show you that. Who gives a shit about that? They're not, they're not good investments. When the shit goes upside down, that watch is going to do nothing for me. Nothing. My Corvettes aren't going to do shit for me. The money in the bank ain't going to do nothing for me. Your greatest lessons are going to be through pain. 